facilitate our success, I'm thinking of Dr. Susan Cota and Dr. Barbara Murdies, who as Chancellor and Vice Pre Chancellor, each respected and supported Chabot's various st strategic initiatives, despite each having deep roots with Las Positas. They led the district through a period of congeniality between the colleges and the district, and they modeled respect for each college. What it feels like to us at Chabot is that despite your good educational intentions, Chancellor Jackson and Vice Chancellor Johns, you have brought, us, you, you brought in a top-down approach to our district that does not fit the culture of our colleges. This management style doesn't respect the will of, or the wisdom of our colleges, and instead seeks to control our directions by overriding our decisions about our budgets, our programs, our hiring, and in many other areas. Uh oh, no gosh. Um, for example, the SERP. Why did you think that was good? Whose idea was that? Um, why didn't the colleges get to weigh in on that idea? You know, what, how does it help to have all the experienced people retire at the same time? Some of us were going to retire anyway. We just don't believe that the colleges should answer to the district's idea of what our colleges should do. Instead, we believe the district exists to support the colleges. We don't believe we are leading, leading your administration to support the colleges, and thus we're saying that we don't have confidence in your leadership of the district. Board of Trustees, you have a very hard job. You're governing two different colleges, and you have a district administration that doesn't always tell you what the colleges really want. And, and it also doesn't let you vote on things that you might have that says a lot. There's uh, the sound's not on that microphone. Clearly, you turned it off. No, no. He said turn it off after three minutes. Who, turned, who said turn it off? The cop. What? They didn't turn it off for somebody else. No. Turn it off for the last one. They it off. This, this, this. Not for the first person. Correct. Wait. Keep it on the whole time. Don't don't turn it off. Okay. Well, Could you repeat can the I just, last sentence? I thank you. I just wanted to say that um, did you hear about that the board of trustees have a very hard job. You're governing two different colleges. You're not always getting all the information from the district about the colleges. You're not being allowed to vote on things that you have an opinion on, like the sanctuary. But um, I trust you to do the right thing. Um, it's your responsibility to make sure that the chancellor is working for the colleges. And, and not for us, not against us. And I urge you to very consider, seriously consider our, our resolution. Thank you, Karen. All right. Um, that's the last of the non-sanctuary uh, college uh, request to speak card. The rest of the cards are uh, sanctuary college cards. I will call five names at a time. Crystal Burgess, the first speaker, followed by Diana Puga. Next, third person is Kay Fisher. The next person is Justino Anella. And the fifth speaker is uh, Janessa Benueva. Those are the five speakers. You can please line up. Uh, come up to the podium. First speaker is Crystal Burgess. Kirsty. All right. Thank you. Been corrected. Kirsty Burgess. Is Kirsty in the room? Kirsty. Here's Kirsty. Welcome. I'm here to support the passing of Sanctuary Campus Resolution. I believe that everyone should feel safe at their school no matter what they identify as, including race, religion, or sexual orientation. Some people think of this campus as a home, and I think everyone should feel safe at their home. Las Vegas is a community college, and it should feel like a community. Thank you. Thank you. Diana? Come up and state your name because it may not be in order. Hello, my name is Vanessa Villanueva. I am a current student here at Las Positas, and I'm here to support the 
Chabot and Las Positas becoming a sanctuary safe campus for all religions, races, and sexual orientations. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, state your name please. Good evening, my name is Kay Fisher. Um, I teach ethnic studies at Chabot College. I advise a student club called the Stay Woke Collective and I wanted to share that I am a daughter of an immigrant parent. Uh, today I'm here to continue my advocacy for the sanctuary resolution. First off, I wanted to thank the board members for finally putting this resolution on the agenda um, and the resolution that LPC has put forward. I understand that for today's meeting, the resolution will be a discussion item only, but I hope that you will consider the following and push forward with voting for the sanctuary resolution as is when you make an action at next month's meeting. Today I wanted to address a few points uh, about the California Values Act and to convince you that the Chabot College Sanctuary Resolution has many important and valid points that uh, SB 54 does not address and therefore should be passed. There are actually quite a few exceptions that a lot of the media press coverage haven't covered in terms of state and law enforcement agencies, including uh, schools and security officers, from cooperating with federal ICE agents. Uh, due to time, I won't name all of them, but I will name a couple that I think are, are um, alarming. First, that the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation would be exempt from the provisions in Senate Bill 54. And secondly, any California law enforcement agency could provide ICE with a person's criminal record and allow immigration agents to interview people inside county jails and state prisons. Secondly, I wanted to um, remind you of the language inside the Tri-Senate Chabot College Sanctuary Resolution it, it really takes an extra step forward in declaring, uh, beyond just declaring public schools as a safe zone. And I wanted to bring your attention to a few of those points. The first is um, the document, the sanctuary resolution, brings up that besides undocumented immigrants who are targeted by policies coming out of the current administration, other groups are also targets of hateful and oppressive policies such as Muslims, women, poor people, and transgender people. Furthermore, it brings attention to the fact that there has been an increase in hate crimes that target these communities. Um, the resolution recommits uh, to creating a school environment free of discrimination, hate, and violence. And most importantly, it highlights on action items that we are going to commit to as a district, including advocating for immigrant women's LGBTQ rights and racial justice for community, uh, sorry, for communities of color from the local to federal levels, to train faculty and staff around FERPA, uh, to earmark, earmark resources that support students such as mental health, legal counseling, campus activities around diversity and social justice training, uh, tuition assistance to students whose financial aid is impacted due to having an undocumented status, such as identifying and promoting scholarships that don't require proof of citizenship or residency, and family planning services and access to contraceptives to women impacted by federal policies. Lastly, I wanted to encourage you to please hold the, the next board meeting at Chabot College. We haven't had that this semester. Let me, at this point, uh, let everyone know that the board has decided that the next meeting will be at Chabot College. Okay. And before the next speaker starts, I'd like to call on the next five speakers so they can start lining up. Sonny Alvarado, Joan Cortez, Lorenzo, Lorenzo Calabaro, and uh, Tafan Stefano. All right, go ahead. Please state your name. My name is Justino Panella, and I'd like to say buonasera to everyone in the language of my 
um, great grandparents who were immigrants here on all, all four of them across the board. So a family of immigrants, which we all are here, right? And, and if um, you're not native, we're immigrants to this land. So I'd like to begin by saying that. Um, after the last Board of Trustees meeting, there were two statements that I heard which left me surprised, if not bewildered, that I wanted to clarify, so I went and did a little research. So one of the statements was that some immigrant rights organizations do not want to adopt the language of sanctuary city. So what I did is I called up the three largest uh, organizations that work for immigrants' rights, ACUDIR, ASILA, and Mujeres Unidas de Activas, and I wanted to check in. And the coordinators of the Rapid Response Networks there said that, um, that this is true, but it's a misleading truth. Because what they said is that um, within their, their communities want to embrace the word sanctuary, but what they want is to define what that means. And they don't want to just slap on the word sanctuary if it doesn't have the historical political significance which it has had throughout the ages. So I wanted to just uh, clarify that one point um, from their organization. I also have a statement I can read by them, maybe at the next meeting if there's time. We have very limited time now. So, the next point I wanted to bring up, which was also left me bewildered, is that um, there's support of the, there was said that the support of the California Value Act, that, that it was taking a, a, a more grandiose uh, road to use the California Values Act as opposed to calling it a sanctuary state. And so, I wanted to look a little bit and see what's the difference here. And basically, it comes down to the California Sheriff, uh, Sheriff Association lobby, Jerry Brown, basically to water down the bill. Um, there are now over 800 ways in which the police can collaborate with ICE. This includes misdemeanors. ICE still has access to jails. So what that brings me, in my mind, it's kind of like a two-tiered system, right? It sounds a little bit like Jim Crow in certain ways. It's like, imagine your son or your daughter could be deported because they committed a misdemeanor. That's what it's saying. And that really, that really saddens me. So when I think of like, what's high roads, what are low roads to me, um, it's really unfortunate that it's the California Values Act and not the California Sanctuary State. So, continuing on, looking at time, I looked that's about time, but I'll say a couple other things. I think we all in the room should look.